In today's video, we're designing yet another headphone holder, but this time we're going to use Fusion 360 to design a much more sophisticated model, and they're going to be designed for my Sennheiser Amperior headphones, which are really nice headphones. Let's get started. All right, guys, so we are now in Fusion 360. So I suggest going to their website and downloading it. This is the latest version. It is slightly cloud-based. Um, Fusion runs on your computer, but it saves to the cloud and will update as well regularly. So keep in mind, you do need an internet connection to use Fusion 360 properly, uh, but it will run lo locally as well with an offline connection for a period of time if you can't have a stable internet connection. So I do quite prefer it over, over Tinkercad because it's not completely reliant on the cloud. Although someone in the previous video was saying there is now an offline version of Tinkercad, which I will look into. But as I said, I much prefer Fusion for doing more technical modeling. So before we do anything, we need to create a new component and I'll explain why. We go to here, assemble, new component. And then here, I'm gonna call it headphone holder like that and it's an empty component. So the reason we want to create a component is because Fusion 360 has what's known as a feature tree. As we model our part, it creates a feature tree with like features we've done like a sketch, extrude. By the way, I have a full version of Fusion 360 tutorials here if you want to go right into detail. This is more just to show an overview. But basically by creating a component, we have access to that feature tree and we can actually do what's called assemblies later on with multiple components. Imagine you're designing a robot platform. It has wheels, it has motors. You can have them all accessible by making them components initially. But if you create components afterwards, for example, for you to draw this model and then make it into a component, we lose access to that feature tree, which is not good if you want to go back in time and change things. So this headphones holder is pretty simple. We're doing an extrude and then I'm going to do a, another extrude to give it a nice curved sh shape and then Basically, uh, lots of lots of uh, fillets, which make everything nice and rounded and pretty, which you can't really do in Tinkercad. So let's go to create sketch, and I'm going to do the top plane here. Okay, sketch workflow. So I'm just going to roughly sketch out how my design looks, which is something like this. So we've got this shape here, like that. And then it goes down a bit here, and then out, and then goes here, that's right like that, and then goes up like that, here, down, cross, up again, here, and down, here, and across. Okay, so <laughs> this is just line based, there's no curvy aspects to it yet. I was going to chuck some dimensions in, so D for dimension. And remember our most important distance was where it holds onto the desk. So I've got here 15.4, 15.4 like that. And I want my top and bottom pieces to be five millimeters in distance like we did before with our Tinkercad version. So I'll just click the, uh, the lines here and that's gonna be five. And I'm gonna do something called a relation which makes the top equal to the bottom without entering two dimensions. Again, you have to go watch my full tutorial series if you wanna understand all this in detail. But here, right click, equal. And I'm also going to make them collinear. Right click and collinear. So now I've got them locked together like that. Now, di the distance into the desk, I want that to be 30. So distance here, 30, like that. That's good. And the area where the headphone is actually hold he held, I want that to be 35. A little bit longer than our previous version. Uh, because I want just to add a little bit more space and that's looking weird so there we go <laughs> um, and, and 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 distance here I want that to be let's go with 10 so D for dis D for dimension 10 okay so we're starting to form our shape you can see there uh, this edge bit here, I want that to be 10 from the bottom as well. So let's make that 10. Something like that. Yeah, that's all right. Um, and overall distance as well, make that maybe 6. 6 look good. 
And this distance here, let's go with eight. So I'm pretty much just fleshing out my design. I'm basing it off my drawing and I'm slowly adding dimensions in to make everything uh, till it stops being able to be moved in space. So you can see right now, there's still some things that need to be dimensioned. So I'm just gonna chuck some dimensions in now. All right, guys, we are back. So as I mentioned, this is not, I repeat, not a full tutorial in Fusion 360. I have a whole series called CAD for Newbies. Click it there that goes through in depth everything I've just done here. But essentially what I've done is fully dimension this drawing. So everything is now locked with dimensions. I can change them and tweak them as I want. And I can go back to this anytime. But as you can see now, if I move this around, it's now fully locked. And if I move it onto our origin, which is right here, zero, 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 it goes black, which is Fusion 360 saying it's now fully defined. And I'm really happy with this. So what I've got here is my little overhang for my headphones, uh, headphone holder, um, cable holder, and the headphone will sit here. And this is where it mounts onto the desk. Right, so I'm gonna stop that sketch like this, and now I'm going to do an extrude. So an extrude takes our outline, our sketch, remember it's a sketch based workflow, and gives it thickness. So I've set that thickness at 25 millimeters. So I just enter 25 and bam. 25 sorted. So I've got our design and it looks pretty chunky um, and I don't want that. I want to make it all nice and rounded. So I'm going to use fillets. Fillets are a very easy, quick and simple way to round over your objects and make them all pretty like. So let's start using fillets. So you want to go to modify and fillet. And with fillets, I'm going to start off by rounding these edges here. So these ones and these bottom ones, let's round them over. Um, so you can see, I can just drag it to figure out what I want. Um, it even starts rounding the other, the back bit, but I'm thinking, what's 10 look like? 10 looks pretty good. I shouldn't have hit enter. Um, I'm actually might do it differently. I might just fill the top one 10 like that. Um, and maybe this one under here, uh, holding down uh, control to like add to selection. So fill up that one there and maybe this one here. That looks pretty nice. Okay, so we'll do those fillets and I'll accept and I'll go to go do modify fillet, some smaller fillets. So let's do, uh, that's this time, let's do five, maybe five millimeters. Uh, and I'll do five there, um, here, here, and yeah, it looks looks pretty decent. And maybe here, there we go. Mm, it's starting to look sexy. And finally, I'm just gonna finish off the edges. Now I'm not gonna do a fillet because when you 3D print this, I'm gonna print it on its side and I want some nice chamfers at 45 degrees because they print better than fillets. Now we do have this overhang here of this fillet edge there. So it might look a bit rough, but should be okay. But what I'm gonna do is just add a chamfer to both edges to just round off everything nicely. So modify chamfer. Well, some people prefer chamfer. I don't really know. My instructors always said chamfer, so I don't really care. Whatever whatever floats your boat. Um, oops, so I'm just gonna select uh, pretty much all the edges, holding down um, control. So those edges, those edges. Um, these ones, <laughs> these ones, these ones, these ones. This can definitely be tedious. Uh, so I do warn you, once you get to this sort of stage, it can be easy to miss areas, um, but I'm pretty happy with that. Okay. And I'm gonna try a 1.5 millimeter distance. That looks pretty good to me. Um, definitely looking a bit strange there though. I might uh, remove those ones. So I might do that, but I might also do a quick fillet just before it. So again, feature tree, let's try it. So down here in the bottom left, you have the feature tree. I can roll back before our chamfer. And I'm just gonna add a small fillet, like maybe, maybe 1.5. 
just to that part there. And then we're going to go roll forwards to our chamfer and it doesn't really like it because we've changed things, so that's okay. We can add add things back in and that looks better. Okay, so adding a small fillet did make that resolve a little bit nicer. I'm thinking that area there uh, is a little bit too thin to print. So with that in mind, we can go back to our original sketch. So I'll just go back to right click, edit sketch. Um, it's upside down, which is annoying. There we go, right way up. So this is the area that was a bit too thin and it's three millimeters we've got it set at. So I'm gonna change that to six. Um, and doesn't like that, so where is it being constrained? It's being constrained by this distance here and this one here. So what I'm going to do is make this one where it's five a little bit further away. So I'm just going to delete that five for now. So here where it, where it was three, it was a little bit too thin. So I'm just going to delete that um, and figure out what I want. I might actually just make it the same distance. I might make it five as the other one. So I'm just going to delete this angle, delete that, delete this, which we'll lose a, cons we'll lose a distance, but that's okay. And then we can just move these into place. Right click, coincident. And then we need to resolve the blue because blue is unconstrained again. So I'm going to make them collinear. That looks fine. And now we've got a bit more meat to it. Okay guys, so this is our design um, and it's ready to print, but at first I'm going to stick my logo onto it. So to do that, I'm going to go to insert, insert SVG and find my logo. Right, we've got our SVG, we can drag it across, just dump it there. Uh, let's make it a little bit larger, move it in a bit larger, that's too large, still too large. That looks good. Now, someone mentioned I did the, uh, in the Tinkercad video, I did the M's the wrong dis wrong direction. So I'm just gonna check with this one. Uh, if that is sitting on the desk like this, it is gonna be the wrong direction. So that's, let's rotate that around, shall we? So let's spin it around 180 degrees, like that. So when it's sitting on our desk, it will be facing the correct direction towards me. Excellent. <laughs> okay, and SVGs import with errors sometimes. So you can see here there's a missing line. That's okay. Just hit L and let's draw a line in to join that up. Stop. And now I'm just going to deboss this, which is sort of, a, it's like an emboss, but it's into the material by minus 0.3. There we go. Now it's into the material and we have a headphone holder designed for my desk. By the way, guys, probably a good idea to save a lot. I forgot because I'm narrating while I design, but I'm going to save this as a head holder V2. Um, and just save it into whatever folder you have. Don't forget that uh, Fusion is cloud-based, so it will save onto the cloud and you can access this to any computer with your login. But I'm happy with that. I'm just going to save it as an STL file now for printing. So right-click your component and then save as STL. Okay, and we can start printing it on our Tron XY X1 using Idea Maker. All right, dudes, we're now in Idea Maker. So I've dropped in my headphones holder and it's come in in the right orientation because that's how I model it in Fusion 360. Um, and heaps of you suggested that I check out the latest version of Idea Maker. Now I thought I had it, but uh, clearly not. A latest version was dropped at the end of January this year. Um, and they've changed quite a few really nifty things to make this probably one of the most powerful free slices I know actually. Uh, so we've dropped, dropped our model in here and uh, we want to print it, but one of the things I'm most excited about is the additional infill options we have now. So don't forget in the previous video with the Tinkercad model, I showed you how to create and set up your 3D printer in Idea Maker and create a default profile. It's going to double click that profile here and go into advanced. So I'm most excited about cubic infill. So cubic infill is a 3D type of infill versus the standard infill where it's like just a two and a half D where it just stacks the same pattern. Cubic infill creates a more stronger, uh, more stronger, yeah, that's that's the word, uh, type of infill that I would actually want for a headphones holder. So I can use less infill, but actually end up with a stronger part than normal. So here we have infill density and infill pattern type. Now, normally it is grid and that's what people normally use, but I'm gonna select cubic. Cubic is very, very cool. And that's all I'm changing my, my settings here. 
and I'm going to save and close and then slice. So let's take a look at what cubic infill actually looks like. Let's scroll down here in the model and you can see the infill actually changes. It actually creates three dimensional cubes as you can see as it goes up. Um, and that's really cool. So that's going to pro provide a, a much stronger infill pattern than the standard standard infill types would. And also we get a time estimate as before. So one hour, 44 minutes, that's about the same as our previous version. And I'm going to print this off in black PLA on the Tron XY X1. Now you can explore microscopic worlds. And here we have it guys, this is the headphones holder we designed in Fusion 360 printed on the Tron XY X1 3D printer as part of our budget makerspace project. So I'm really happy with how this turned out. The printer has a few little sort of, a little bit of wispy bits on it but it cleans up easily and uh, it holds the, the headphones really nicely actually. I'm really, really quite happy with how it doesn't sort of damage it, it's not sharp, doesn't have sharp edges. The, the chamfers on the edges work nicely as do the fillets all around the shape. And uh, actually the little holder part for the the cables also works quite well, although maybe a little bit too tight. Uh, as is seems to be always the case with 3D modeling, things look much bigger on the screen than they are in real life. For example, you see how thick the cable is here when it comes to uh, fitting through that gap, like the actual connector can't fit through, stuff like that. But really that's easy to tweak. And the purpose of this video as you probably would have noticed, is this is my this is my design process. So from start to finish, you're not going to get it right first go. You are going to tweak things. So I might go back into this design and change a few dimensions to print it again. And if you're interested in what the iterative process actually is, I actually have a whole video on iteration and how everything is iterative. Uh, you might find it quite interesting. Go check that out. But guys, you might prefer to use other processes or methods to design your products. For example, you might prefer the simpler approach that Tinkercad gives you versus the more intensive Fusion 360 workflow, which does give you more options, but it's, uh, it is definitely harder to learn. And that's totally okay. My aim here on Makers Muse is to empower your creativity, and that can be through whatever you prefer, whatever method you see as the most suitable to you. This is just how I do things, and I hope you enjoyed the video. I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Catch you later, guys. Bye.